after DHCP, or I mean, the, the next thing we'll talk about is NTP, but you know, I would say maybe configure NTP first. I was trying to think about the order of configuration. Um, NTP is a very important service, okay? Um, it's one that allows us to share the time between different devices on the network. Sure, that's the whole purpose. Um, but if we actually don't get this configured correctly and don't get the servers synchronized, it can cause actually replication issues um, between servers. And of course, replication issues are not real fun <laughs> to have to troubleshoot. Um, but it is a possibility in the lab for you, okay? Replication issues are uh, unfortunately a part of it only because we've got, you know, think about VMware snapshots. Those aren't technically supported, um, but that's what they have to use. They have to load a snapshot. They're not going to just, you know, reconfigure this lab every single time. Um, so that, that could pose a problem for you. Um, but if you have the clock so far off from where the synchronization is happening and, and what the clock should be, um, it can take a long time to synchronize and that can cause rep replication issues between the servers. Okay, um, so if that's the case, we'd want to issue the utils db replication repair all command. Um, we could also do utils db replication stop, you know, start, reset. There's a whole bunch of different commands that we can do there. Uh, repair all is usually the one that I'll use after I do a stop. Okay, um, but moral of the story, how to configure NTP, right? If we, we've got the NTP master command. Okay, and also the NTP server command. NTP master says that I want to use uh, myself or my router, this router that I'm configuring, as the master device. And I get to define something called a stratum for that device. <coughs> Excuse me. That stratum um, is basically a measurement of the accuracy of the clock. Okay, so I could say NTP master one. And that means I have the most accurate clock ever, right? One is the lowest value, that means it's the best, best and most accurate. If I said NTP master 10, right, that means that I'm acknowledging that my clock is not super accurate, but it still is okay, right? Um, so it used to be that call manager didn't like synchronizing with a stratum like greater than seven or something like that, six or seven, um, and it wouldn't actually let you do it. Nowadays it gives you a warning, but it'll still let you synchronize with it. Um, so enter NTP master and then whatever stratum they specify, if they don't specify one, that's okay. Um, You've also got NTP server, and that's when you want to synchronize with a device that, that is your master, right? Um, after that, you've got the clock time zone command that will set your local time offset. And when you share out time to other devices, it actually doesn't send your time zone. It sends the time in UTC, universal coordinated time, right? So it's, it's going to do that only because it has a, a certain baseline that, all, that it operates on. It's expecting to receive it in UTC, okay? So that way we can set our own offset on each different device that we have in the network, okay? Uh, in iOS, we would do a show NTP status and show NTP associations to see what's actually going on with that. Let's take a look at the configuration here at R1. Show run include NTP. We've got NTP server here actually on R1 pointing towards our backbone, okay? 1010.254.254. That's our, our backbone router. Essentially, it's getting the, the time from the backbone router. Also, we've got this NTP source command, which is saying any NTP traffic that I send out from my end should be using loopback zero as the source. That doesn't mean that you should connect to me on loopback zero. It just says that that's my source, okay? So if I did a show NTP status, see that the clock is synchronized at stratum nine, okay? Uh, the reference is 10, 10, 254, 254, okay? So the backbone. And if I did a show NTP associations, I can see that that little asterisk tells me that I am in fact synchronized with that device, okay? That's obviously a good thing to see. That's what you want to see. Um, it is a stratum eight device in the backbone and that's the default stratum that you use. So if you, if you just said NTP master on your own router, it would just use the stratum eight by default, okay? So from there you would just use, if, if you wanted to synchronize now with R1, you could technically, um, any interface that you want. You, you, typically, typically they're going to tell you what interface to synchronize with, uh, but it doesn't have to be that interface technically. As long as it goes to the right device, you're good to go, okay? Um, so like for example on R3, NTP configuration over here, we've got NTP server 10.10.1.1, which happens to be the loopback address, loopback zero address of R1. So show NTP associations. We're synchronized there at stratum nine, okay? And we'll do show NTP status as well. 
Stratum 10 is our current Stratum. That's the one that we're using locally on this router in comparison to where it's been synchronized from. So as you can see, like router one synchronized with the backbone that was on Stratum 8. So that makes router one Stratum 9. And then R3 synchronized with R1, which makes it Stratum 10. So it's kind of like a hop count almost. Um, as you go through each hop, it's going to remove a stratum, okay, or add a stratum, that is. Okay, uh, so that's how you would do that on iOS. Uh, pretty straightforward to synchronize that up. Now, on, on the UC servers, it's a little bit different, okay. We could do this either via the web, via operating system administration, or via SSH, which I would suggest doing, actually. Um, I used to be a proponent of doing this on the web, but it's better to do it on the um, command line, so that way you can see a little bit more information. Let me jump into the command line of the pub, for example. Enter CCI collab. We're just doing SSH to the pub. And <clears throat> we'll look at utils NTP status, for example. Okay, this tells me the same type of thing that I saw on iOS. And in fact, I'm synchronized to R1 here, the loopback address. If I did this through the web interface, I actually don't see this information. I see that it can actually access the device, 10.10.1.1, but I actually don't get um, the status saying that it is synchronized. Okay, so this is the only place you can actually do that in Call Manager. Okay, um, now the other thing too is if I do a utils NTP server list, It'll show me the, the servers that I have, right? Only one in this case, 10.10.1.1. Uh, 10, 10, 1, 1. Well, how about this? Utils, what if I had to configure instead 10.10.3.3? 10, 10, 3, 3? Maybe that's what they wanted me to synchronize to. Uh, R3's loopback address for some reason. We say utils, NTP, server, question mark, add, delete, or list. Let's say delete. It says you can delete the first server, you can delete all servers, or quit, right? So how about we delete all? How about that? It's, it doesn't make a difference. There's only one server. Sure, restart NTP. This will result in all the servers being deleted. Sure, yes. And now what happens is it comes back and says, you can't do that. <laughs> it says at least one NTP server is required, okay? So it's interesting to even have that option to delete all. Uh, so really what you need to do when you configure this is add the server that you're interested in and then delete the other server that you're, you don't need, okay? That's the order of operations. And then after that, of course, Utils NTP status, make sure they're synchronized to that server. All right, but let's think about this. Where do we actually have to synchronize our iOS devices, or our, our UC devices, that is? If it said, make sure that you synchronize time with all devices in the network, okay? Let's think about each individual device. We just saw that we were on the HQ publisher. So that's one possible device where we can synchronize. Now think about this, guys. Like, where else could we possibly synchronize? Now the, the sub is another possibility, right? That also needs to have the right time, but think about that, right? The sub is going to be connecting, I have a database connection anyway, to the publisher, and it's no different for NTP. In fact, the sub is going to be getting its time from the publisher, okay? So basically the sub is subservient to the publisher, okay? It's going to be getting its network, network time information from there. So we don't need to configure anything on the sub, okay? Is there any other place in the network that we, that we would need to configure? Um, maybe the site B publisher, of course. We're going to need the call manager servers, okay? How about, uh, let's see, HQ UCCX, UCCX server. Maybe you need to be synchronized there. Anything else? Maybe HQ Unity Connection? How about site B unit connection? What about the IMM presence servers? Okay. Actually, for, for our case here, for the IMM presence servers, we don't need to actually configure NTP there. The reason why is, and we'll see this on Thursday when we talk about it, is that when we go through and configure the database connection to call manager from IMM presence, it actually acts as if a subscriber has registered to that database. Okay. So in effect, what that means is that the IMM presence servers are getting their time information from the call manager servers, okay, for, from specifically the call manager publisher. So that means we don't need to configure it. So one, two, three, four, five places then that we would need to synchronize NTP 
if that is in fact something that we, we have as a task. Okay? So this will synchronize every device in the network and then all the other devices will just synchronize to those devices in some fashion. Okay? So keep that in mind if they say synchronize time with all EC devices, you've got five different things to do there. They're all the same configuration but just kind of busy work there. Okay?